What do you think is the biggest downside to running an iPhone reselling business? Uh, I don't know what to do with all this money. Uh... <laughs> Last year, I made a video with my friend Christian who built up an iPhone reselling business from $0 to about a million dollars in revenue. And one of the top comments that I got on that video is that the ship has sailed and that this is not a sustainable way to make money. So we decided that we're gonna meet back up a year later and prove to all of those people that were commenting on that video that this is still a good business model. They can still make good money flipping iPhones, starting with $0 and building it up to tens of thousands of dollars a month like Christian has. So here's how this business works. Go to a seller website like Facebook Marketplace, find iPhones being sold in your area for a good deal, and drive as far as you have to to get that phone. Then you're gonna list it back on Facebook or eBay for more than you bought it for. Yeah, it's that simple. So let's see how much profit we can make today. How's it going? We have another one. You have another one? Oh, well, so this one was my wife's old phone. Okay. The other one was my daughter's old phone. If you have more, I could come grab them all if you yeah, find them I today. Yeah, and I think I have a few older ones as well. I don't know if okay. those are of any appeal, but... I can buy anything above an eight. So I don't know if you want to take a look at what you got. Okay, And sure. then if you find them, I could stop back on my way back and grab them. Done. Sweet. 50. Awesome. There you are. Awesome, Sweet. man. Go, man. Have a good one. Thank you. Take care. Secured. So he has other phones. Like he has his daughter, like he has two others that are the same model. So we might pick those up on the way back. Really? Yeah. First phone is down. Things in like really good condition, not gonna lie. What phone is it? It's an 11, 64 gigabyte. We bought it for 250 and we should be able to sell it for like, I think 380 to four is what I was seeing them for on eBay. So what are we on track to doing? Like six, $700 in profit, something like that? Uh, I think I calculated for the three would probably be like four or 500. Um, with the additional ones, maybe six, 700. Uh, but I don't like to count my money before I've made it. What do you think is the biggest downside to running an iPhone reselling business? Uh, I don't know what to do with all this money. No, no uh, biggest <laughs> downside? I don't really think about the downsides off. I, inventory, actually. Just straight up inventory. It's a great way to like get started uh, as like a first business because it's like it's real profit right there. There's not a crazy amount of marketing. Apple does the marketing. Like there's a lot. Like if the barrier to entry is pretty low and you could scale it to a decent place. Uh, but to get to like the the million a month profit type place I'd like to get to eventually it's just like physical things are harder than like a digital product or software or something like that. How's it going? What'd you do? Just upgrade it or? I went to a Samsung. Samsung? Do you have any other phones you're looking to sell or just the one? I do have an eight. So there it is right here. I'm quite sure what these things okay. are worth. So. I'm going to be transparent. I sell them around like 100, 110. So, so I'd be, I'd going? be like 50 bucks for it. Just like while I'm here. Okay. There you are. Okay. So he has an iPhone 8. Really? Uh, yeah, I offered him 50 bucks for it, and he's gonna reset it for me. So you're gonna buy it right now? Yeah, so we're gonna get another 8. Okay. Sweet. There you go. I'm buying like other phones today if you're All wondering right. why there's cash coming no, from everywhere. <laughs> there you are. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks, Take care. Have a good if you one. ever have phones, let me know. I could buy anything above an 8. Uh, I'm gonna be selling mine because uh, I'm gonna be upgrading soon. These are the best deals. The best deals are the ones that never ended up on the internet because then you make your offer. So now we're driving all the way back. Uh, it's about a 45 minute drive and we're picking up our fourth phone of the day. So you went from selling wholesale phones on eBay to Amazon and now you're going back to the original business model that you had which was just going on Facebook Marketplace, finding phones for cheaper and selling them for more. So what was your reasoning behind that? Why did you go back to this? I think people have the wrong idea on how wholesale works with something like this. Uh, it's not the same as traditional wholesale with like manufactured goods, where with the typical manufactured good, you're gonna save more by buying in quantity. Whereas with phones, it's like they've already been manufactured and it's a used commodity that's actually difficult to source. So when you buy them from a wholesale wholesaler, they're upcharging you compared to what you could find them for on Facebook or, or whatever because of that, because they're tough to source. Also, you need a lot of capital to do it. You can't, uh, a lot of people reach out and they wanna skip this whole part and just like, because they have 10 or $20,000 saved up that they could think they could do wholesale. Uh, you need hundreds of thousands, if not millions to properly be buying inventory and be able to handle like cash flow for like how long it takes to get paid for phones or you're selling on platforms like Amazon. The, re the reason we share this is because it's the type of thing where anyone with any amount of money could get into. Like we literally bought this iPhone 8 for $50 today. If you wanna to talk about a business you could start that you could make money right away, um, 
There was no marketing cost, there was nothing. We spent $50 on this phone, we're gonna sell it for like $150, $180. All profit right away. If people wanna to jump to wholesale way too early, I think there's something exciting about buying them individually and seeing your profit right away, seeing 15, 20, 30 grand a month profit. To be honest, I'm doing it again and it's a lot more exciting to me than wholesale was. Wholesale just feels like moving money around and a lot more headaches. Speaking of headaches, we pulled up to the Tesla charging station where we were supposed to meet the next seller and we ran into our first setback of the day. So we got stood up. We kind of jumped the gun and showed up before we fully confirmed we were meeting up. He asked for the address where he'd be coming to and everything. Once we got here, he said he can't make it out there actually. Does this happen, happen often? Uh, not super often. Uh, but it is something that happens occasionally. Sometimes people will get a better offer randomly and not show up. In this case, it's kind of our fault. I kind of jumped the gun because we we're just like already on a roll for the video. Might be a good lesson. Confirm the details before you show up. Luckily, this doesn't put us that far behind because right after this, we got a text from the first seller saying he has three more phones that he could sell us. Which brings us to six phones bought for the day, three iPhone 11s that we bought for an average of $250 and we could sell for $380 per phone, three iPhone 8s that we bought for an average of $100 and we could sell each of those for $180. And that brings us to an average profit of $104 per phone so far. So we're just gonna head back, get these listed on eBay and then hopefully find maybe one or two more phones for the day. Why sell strictly iPhones? Why not sell Androids, other types of phones? What kind of phone do you have? That's an iPhone 12. iPhone. What kind of phone does your mom have? She has an iPhone. What about all your friends? You got like one friend who's like, I got a Samsung. Yeah, that's true. So if like you wanted to have to source goods that are already difficult to source, you'd probably go for the thing that everyone has. And if you're gonna get a good deal, it's cause everyone has a phone, then everyone is gonna sell their phone. Well, unless you're really rich, then you just put it in a drawer. And have you tried uh, selling other Apple products? Have you tried iPads, MacBooks? Yeah, you could do, those work, but it's again, it's like, it's just, I, I'd rather pick the thing that's easiest to sell. When you break your phone, the next day you go buy a phone. You break your computer, you figure out how to make it work. So like, there's just a lot more volume. Every single person has a phone, and it, when your phone's broken, it's the first thing you wanna replace. So it's just picking the thing with like the most option for scale. You can do every other things. And I think at a smaller scale, I'd probably like, if you just want to like figure out how to make maybe like two grand plus a week, I think you should probably look into like doing watches, MacBooks, everything, and just like buy them individually. I always have built everything from like, how can I scale it to like, and build systems around it. But for your average person, sure. You could probably do MacBooks, watches, whatever. I just would rather pick the thing that everyone has. Yeah. That phone's sick. What phone is this? This thing is sick. 14 Pro. <laughs> Flexing. <laughs> yeah. So at this point, we're messaging a few more sellers and we're gonna go pick up our last phone of the day. Okay, we're with Mike, who we just picked up candidly. Just now. Just right now. Yo, what's up? You guys just picked me up. Mike, you also started flipping phones recently. So what made you want to start flipping phones and how has it gone for you so far? And when did you start? So I've been flipping cell phones for about 10 months now. Um, before that I was doing Uber, wasn't making a ton of money. Christian put me onto this business model and yeah, it's been going well. It was kind of a steep learning curve with negotiations and everything that goes into finding good deals on Facebook and figuring out how to sell them as well. On average, I'd say I'm making about a thousand dollars a week. I, you know, like the past couple of weeks, it was like 1300 profit thousand profit. I've had a $2,500 week, which was sick. I'm definitely working less than 40 hours a week, maybe somewhere between like 15 and 25 hours a week. What's been the hardest part? I find it easier to sell than to buy. Like there's always a buyer. Um, even if you have to hold a phone for a month, you'll sell it on Facebook or Kijiji or to a cell phone shop or on eBay. Like it'll sell. It's just um, keeping keeping your momentum going with buying. Yeah, if you're someone who's not making money right now, um, or you're not making a lot of money, then I would say it's definitely worth trying because um, you will make money. You need like, you could start this with like $100. Like you don't really need a lot of money to start. You could, um, turn, $100 into you could turn $100 into $1,000 and then $1,000 into $10,000 and then $10,000 into 
hundred thousand. There's not a link in the description where you can see me turn a hundred dollars into a thousand dollars, or a full channel where I teach you guys how to flip phones or just make content about phone flipping. So at this point, we were supposed to meet up with the last seller, but he started acting a little bit suspicious. First, he asked us for a deposit just to hold the phone for us. Then we noticed that the address he sent us was in a different city than the one he told us to come to. And then once we noticed that the only picture on his profile was of a cat and his reviews were not great, we asked to meet at a police station, at which point he tried to reschedule the meeting to tomorrow and then just stopped answering altogether. So I guess we took another L. All right, so we started the day with three phones locked in. At one point, we were gonna buy eight phones for the day. We ended up getting stood up by two separate sellers, which is like unheard of in this. You said that's never really happened to you at all. Yeah. It, very rare. Um, it's literally me doing exactly what I tell people not to do. It was just us trying to rush to some phones, but it happens. At least now we could show them what not to do. Because uh, honestly, I couldn't relate. Everyone was concerned about scams, and today's the first day I really saw any signs of what a scam would look like, because I normally have a pretty good BS radar. But, you know, today got lost in the sauce, got a little too excited about just trying to get as many phones for this video as possible. So, so yeah, we did, we did pretty good. I guess there is kind of a lesson there to not try to rush profit. Once again, if you see a deal that seems too good to be true, most of the time it is. And in this case, we did kind of get burned. The problem is they weren't, they weren't too good to be true. The problem was we were just rushing and like, do your due diligence would be the, be the better thing. It's literally just like, check their profile, check their ratings. Make sure they're a real person. Like all the things you should do before you meet up with a stranger, we didn't do. The good news is, I will say, we tried to meet up at a police station. So if we met up with these people, we would have been, we did all the things to keep, keep ourselves safe, uh, but we did kind of waste our time. But either way, we're finishing up this video with six phones bought. And I'm gonna throw up the total profit on the screen right now. Wow. <laughs> If you guys enjoyed it, you can actually check out Christian's channel who we started after we made that first video. Um, and his channel is all about selling iPhones and this entire business. So go check that out. Thanks for watching this video and we'll see you in the next one. Peace out.